whenever the host feels ready or the chair feels ready. Let's do it. So I will call the Italian Post Commission meeting for July, Tuesday, July 15, 2000, 2020, uh, to order a uh, hearing, virtual hearing held via WebEx. So I will um, first do a roll call. I've noticed, uh, I think, most commissioners on here, but I may have nothing to do. So first, uh, David, could you state your name for the record? David Cook. And Ben? Ben Goodman. Shannon? Shannon Fergus. Todd? Todd Boyer. Um, is there anybody else on here that I'm not seeing on this list? I do not believe so. Commissioners McNair and Mitchell Smith had let me know that they would not be in attendance this evening. Or Michael Smith, sorry. Okay. So uh, I'm Jason Sudi and I am the chair and member of the commission and it uh, looks like we've got five of us here today. So with that, let's flip back over to my agenda. Right, flip back over to my agenda. Uh, is. Okay, the next commission monthly business meeting will be at noon on Tuesday, July 28th, 2020, also a virtual hearing. Uh, the next commission, So a uh, virtual held by a webinar. I would like to swear in staff. Kimberly, will anybody else be speaking besides you today? Uh, no, just me. Although if anybody else needs to, well, we can always swear them in on the spot, but um, okay. I anticipate having to swear in Connie. Will you state your name for the record? Lee Bernard. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony to the best of your ability this afternoon? I do. Excellent, thank you. Next, we will, um, we've already gone through the commissioners, so I think we've got that taken care of. Approval of minutes. Can I have a motion for the approval of the Tuesday, June 9th, 2020 minutes? So moved. Ben. Okay, here. Ben moves. Do I have a second? Second. Todd? Sure, I'll second it. Seconds. I'll call the roll. Uh, ben? Uh, yes. David? Yes. Todd? Yes. We lost him. Shannon? Uh, abstain. I wasn't there. Okay, abstention from Shannon, and then I'll say yes. So, four in favor, the motion carries. And then uh, we also had a special June meeting on, on Thursday, June 25th, 2020, second meeting. Uh, can I have a motion for the approval of those meeting minutes? I moved. Seconded. Ben. Okay, Ben Ben made the motion, David seconded. Let's, uh, do the roll again, Ben. Uh, aye. Yes. David? Yes. Shannon? Yeah. Shannon, did we lose you? Okay, and Todd? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Motion carries. Okay, uh, public forum. Looks like we do have a public forum. Staff, would you like to introduce the uh, folks that will be speaking tonight? Yes, we have Catherine Hull and Adam Friedman, and they are going to speak about the Columbus Airbnb. And I believe Catherine called in. Jacqueline, we may have muted her. I want to say she's calling user number three. Okay, yeah, we might be doing some feedback. I will unmute her. This okay, is just a Catherine. This is just a public forum. We you don't need to me? do any swearing in, right? Correct. And yes, Catherine, we can hear you. Excellent. Okay. Hey, Catherine, how are you? I apologize. I'm good. How are you guys? I apologize. My internet kept cutting in and out. No problem. It's just the um, way it goes these days. <laughs> um, I'll be very brief because I'm sure you guys will probably want to hear more um, from the legal side from Adam with the city attorney's office and what they are working on with Airbnbs. Um, but my name is Catherine Call. I'm the Northside Pride Center Manager with the Department of Neighborhoods. And one of the areas that I serve over is Italian Village. Since COVID has started, there has been a tremendous increase in phone calls and emails that I have been receiving um, 
all over my areas, but particular to Harrison West, Italian Village Short North, with concerns over Airbnb rentals. Um, we have seen an increase in large parties. We have seen an increase in crime, and we have seen an increase in shooting, um, all related to Airbnbs um, due to COVID and people seeking out places to have gatherings that they're not supposed to be. Um, on my end, when I receive phone calls and emails from residents, there's a couple things I can do. Um, my first piece of advice is to treat an Airbnb property like any other nuisance property in your neighborhood. You know, if there is a large party, if there is violence, if there's guns and shootings, you obviously want to call the police in real time um, so that the police can be dispatched. That is also important for the city attorney's side so that they have that documentation to see how many police runs have gone to that resident. If there's concerns over trash, if there's concerns over um, anything exterior to the building, you can contact me and I can connect you with code. Um, I can I have also connected residents with our uh, short term leasing so that we can contact our city leasing officer and uh, we can report that Airbnb property and request that that listing be removed. Um, and then I've just been working closely with the city attorney's office and police about nuisance properties. Um, and I'll let Adam speak a little bit about additional legislation that the city is moving towards to better regulate Airbnbs. Great. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, thank you to the commission, to the members for allowing me to present to you today. My name is Adam Friedman. I am deputy solicitor general in uh, city attorney Zach Klein's office. Just to give you a little bit of my background. Uh, I was a prosecutor here for the city for five years in the, in the criminal law field, uh, moved into the policy world um, in Mayor Ginther's office, and then transitioned back to the city attorney's office in this new role uh, in March literally during the first week of quarantine, uh, when things sort of, uh, the whole world just sort of took a new turn. Uh, when I joined the office, I was tasked with reviewing chapter 598, which is the current hotel, motel, and short-term rental permit uh, section for the city. Uh, among the uh, various oversights I had in reviewing that chapter was to, um, focus in on enforcement uh, for the past uh since the past am amendment to the legislation uh more instances of disturbances in, in neighborhoods uh related to the health safety and welfare of the community uh, have become more prevalent as as even catherine mentioned uh and what we found uh by going through the code uh in the enforcement section specific that uh, it was not drafted sufficiently to allow for the most robust enforcement that we could, uh, that the city could take uh, in pursuit of criminal charges against any bad actors out in our communities. So what I'd like to do is first read you a statement that um, I will be presenting to a legal conference next week that describes the current situation in, in, in Columbus. So the primary focus in reviewing chapter 598 is to legally strengthen the enforcement section for the purpose of holding responsible those persons or organizations that rent a short-term rental without a permit or fail to list a valid permit on a hosting platform. The current language and definitions which describe the universe of culpable persons and actions are narrowly defined and do not compass the totality of potential bad actors or actions. Robust enforcement of these violations is therefore hindered and with such a limited scope and insufficient definitions. As such, uh, suggested amended language will broaden the scope of persons and conduct to reflect the current landscape of the short-term rental industry and the licensing process. To this end, and to make harmonious with the overall legislation, uh, other definitions have been created, amended, or deleted. Additionally, certain culpable behavior uh, became a strict liability offense um, in the penalty sections. Council member Rob Doran's office and city attorney Zach Klein's office have shared many conversations about neighborhood safety and residents quality of life issues as they relate to short term rentals. And how the licenses division is hampered to respond consistently and with an appropriate remedy under the current framework. 
Uh, suggested language would provide the licensing division and the director with ad additional remedies for revocation and suspension. The scope of grounds for revocation or suspension has also been uh, broadened to include calls for service at the short term rental. If any call was in relation to a criminal violation of uh, the Columbus City chapter, uh, Columbus City Code or Ohio Revised Code. Uh, it does add, you know, suggested language would add authority to deny a permit for criminal activity that occurred at an applicant's dwelling prior to the application. Uh, it would provide a minimum of three calls for service for, for administrative review for revocation or suspension. Uh, it would set a standard for uh, revocation or suspension if that short term rental endangered neighborhood safety or diminished residents quality of life. Uh, and lastly, uh, the short term rental, if it's been declared as a public nuisance or the applicant or host has not abated or has been found guilty of maintaining a public nuisance, uh, would be subject to suspension and revocation. The reason that uh, neighborhoods are getting frustrated with the, the current status and state of uh, the short term rental industry in Columbus is that um, the the industry continue. The industry moves at a faster pace than the law was drafted. As as drafted, uh, the definitions that were understood to be uh, applicable to this industry are not as applicable as they could be today. The industry continue, continues to evolve. The bad actors in the community who operate without permits uh, or who list fraudulent permits. Uh, or are throwing uh, parties and, and, and have the loud noises and the trash and the parking issues. They're being held accountable at this moment by uh, law enforcement uh, runs for service, as well as 311 with, with code violations. Until uh, council gets back in from their August recess, they do not intend to uh, have the first public hearing until then on any new legislation. And I'm, I'm sorry, I I'm the, the, the messenger of, of not the most perfect news, but uh, it, change is coming to the, the framework and it will be a more overall robust um, uh, framework for enforcement and for, um, for maintaining a quality of life in, in, in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Mr. Goodman, Commissioner Goodman. Yeah, I've got several questions. I mean, the purview of this uh, uh, this group is really about architecture and, to some extent, planning. Uh, so, my first question would just uh, be about the, the, the guidelines of the legislation uh, indicate density of uh, permits that could be issued in a given uh, block or uh, neighborhood, um, and is it public knowledge? Who is a permit holder? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the last part of your question. Is is it on public record, public accessible record, uh, who the per permit holders are, so that a, a neighbor can make sure that the there's a legitimate permit versus an sure. Okay, so the first part of your question deals with um, something uh, municipalities deal with all across the country is whether to. Uh, limit or put a cap on uh, either the number of total number of cumulative short term rentals in their municipality or to limit uh, it to a particular zoning district or even limit a cap in a zoning district. Um, each municipality can tailor make to their own uh, community standards. Uh, this goes to a, a policy question and uh, the on the front end of this uh, legislation back in 2016, Council Member Stinziano's office did not uh, did not put a maximum cap on uh, his his uh, legislation that he passed regarding short term rentals. There's not a cap on the number of total short term rental permits for the city, nor is there a designated zone in which they they need to be uh, located. Um, to your second question about uh, a list of uh, uh, the city's database for short-term rental permit holders, uh, any that is a that is a uh, a record under the law that uh, is held by the uh, licensing division, and therefore is subject to public records requests. So any person is uh, free to make such public records requests for uh, any relevant information that you would 
want to see out of that database and subject to any qual uh, you know qualified exemptions or uh, confidential redactions uh, that list is a, is public knowledge All right, and, and, to, and, and to that point if i may add um uh, there is a community desire, a neighborhood desire to see, to visually see um, and have transparent uh, on a database map the locations and address and contact information and host information and, and uh, license number um, for any short term rental permits in the neighborhood. So uh, behind the scenes right now, we, the city attorney's office, is working with licensing and Department of Technology to uh, create a online map uh, with the goal that uh, residents would be able to search that map to determine where and if there is a short-term rental present in their neighborhood, um, if that person has a, a license, you'd be able to determine right away so right now we're just going through the logistics, the technology, and the legal, uh, the law on whether what we would have to redact, what we'd have to make public. All right, our quest is, uh, can you provide the phone number through our staff uh, for how somebody might be able to uh, touch base with the uh, city and, and properly request the information that I, uh, of permit holders? Yeah, that I mean, you would the uh, a person would uh, contact the city's licensing division. Uh, the director there is Kathy Collins. Um, while you're looking that up, the first question really wasn't answered, and that's uh, we're also interested in whether the legislation included density per neighborhood. So, not a special zone or a cap, but uh, you know, you can only have ten per block or uh my guess is that the answer is no as is as is currently drafted uh with council member doran's office office that his legislation does not have any sort of clause like that thank you you're welcome uh the contact number for the department of licensing division is area code 614-645-8366 I do know that their physical office on Groves Road is not staffed at the moment. Uh, they are all still working from home uh, due, to, due to the city's uh, stay at home order. So to, uh, to the public records request, I don't have a, a, a direct contact person that you would, you would contact. Any other questions out there from commissioners? Okay, hearing none, uh, we appreciate it. Thanks very much for the update. And uh, any other comments you have for us before we we turn over to our regular agenda? No, thank you for allowing me to present to you. All right, Adam, thanks. Get it. Thank you, guys. Okay, so moving into our regular agenda, there are, are there, there are no other public forums, correct staff? Correct. Okay, great. So moving into our regular agenda, uh, we have staff approvals that start on page like, uh, five of the agenda. Can I have a motion for approval of the staff approved applications? So moved. All right, Commissioner Cook, do I have a second? Second. Sounds like Commissioner Boyer. Yep. Um, I'll go, uh, I'll call the roll and then we'll go for abstentions. Uh, Commissioner Cook? In favor. Boyer? Yes. Burgess? Yes. Goodman? Yes. And Sudi is a yes. And then we go through for abstentions. Um, 1081 North 4th. And you can just wave your hand if I don't get you in time to make sure. Um, 375 East 5th. 843 Summit. 302 uh, Cornelius. That one's abstain for Goodman. For 843? 
Yes. Okay, great. Uh, 302 Cornelius. 770 Hamlet. 991 North 4th. 1090 Okay, I think that's it. Any other abstentions? Speak now. Okay, hearing none. Uh, you have that staff. You're good. I do. Thank you. Okay, great. So, staff recommended applications. That would be IV-20-07-007-1090 Say Avenue, and I will turn it over to staff for a report. So, we moved that one to staff approval at the business meeting. Uh, yep. Do you have anything else? Oh, that's already in staff approval. Never mind. Yes. Officially, we already we already voted on it. All right. Well, that made that easy. So, moving to the next one. ID-20-03-010, 59 to 65 East Russell Street. Find the applicants out there for this one. I believe I saw it. Um, I'm here. Yeah, out there early, earlier. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Somebody. Okay. Um, can you uh, state your name, right hand, and state your name for the record? Joseph Kariba. And well, I can't see it, but uh, oh. do you promise to tell your, uh, do you promise to tell the truth in your testimony to the best of your ability this afternoon? Yes. Oh, there we go. I got gotcha. you. Okay, um, staff, tell us what's going on. This is a continued application to develop the existing grass surface into eight parking lot spaces along Eden Alley. Uh, the lots to be covered with permeable papers and a concrete apron. The applicant has submitted a different paver to me, which I emailed out to all of the commissioners earlier today, as opposed to the ones that were originally included, and it should be in the materials as well. Items for discussion include commissioners at the business meeting noted that unless the pavers were changed to solid edge to edge permeal pavers, the design would not be approved. They were in favor of the layout and most commissioners supported the parking, but they agreed the proposed pavers uh, were not a suitable parking option. And per city code, the gravel isn't an appropriate parking material, but with the different pavers that seems to be addressed. And I had originally said approved with the condition that the solid papers are used, and I believe that may be met. Okay, I'm still sorry. I'm still trying to find those. You said they're in the new materials. Yes, they should be the very last page, and it's also showing on the screen here as okay. well. Okay, great, great, great. Okay, uh, over to the applicant. Yeah, so we've just talked uh, through the previous permanent papers for the. Um, I'm losing the audio a little bit. Is everybody else able to hear? You guys hear me now? A little bit better. So you switched the uh, papers, you said. Any other uh, things you want to share with us? So, um, I'm going to do the parking lines and contracting. I could not hear the applicant. Yeah, yeah, I can't hear. Hello. Hello. That works. There you go. You got me now? Yep, yep. Okay. So we've swapped the original paper submission to the Yes, that would be the color selection. And then the lines would be in the contract to the gray. I'm kind of kind of still not getting all all the words. Staff, are you hearing what the applicant's saying? Not all of it. I'm also hearing about every other word 
as well. Yeah, I'm just not, not quite catching. I'm not sure, Joseph, what's going on with your microphone, but not quite hearing it. So let's go around to all the commissioners and maybe um, kind of fiddle around with that. We can see if we can improve the sound. So uh, I'll just go through the list here. Um, uh, ben, would you like to start? Yeah, I'm going to support the project. Uh, I think the applicants uh, made a good point with visually about uh, how much parking and, and lot coverage there has been with adjacent um, uh, properties. So I'll support the number of parking spaces uh, with the change uh, to a solid paver. It's a definitely an improvement. Um, and I'm hoping to uh, that we can also uh, uh, get the applicant to plant a, a large uh, or medium tree uh, as part of their plan, or at least we, I would support that. Okay, great. Uh, Todd? Um, the same, I'm in support of uh, the application with the revised papers. Okay, Shannon? I agree. David, I would also support this revised plan. Um, as do I. Thanks for switching those papers out. Uh, I definitely think the other ones were not appropriate. These are definitely uh, both appropriate and thing very similar to what we've seen in other places. And looks like you have installation details there that staff can verify. So we do appreciate that. Um, staff, is there anything else that? Not that I can think of. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion? So moved. All right. Commissioner Cook, do I, I have moved. a second? Second. All right. Second. Second from Ben Goodman. I'll call the roll. Uh, Commissioner Cook? Yes. Goodman? Yes. 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 Boyer? Yes. And Sudi is a yes. Motion carries. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Moving to the next application. Oops, wrong program. Give me a second here. Uh, it is IV-20-03-016-830-2022. Some street. Uh, and here's it. Uh, we've got JP Seacrest here. Okay, great. Um, will you please raise? Will you raise your right hand and state your name for the record? J.P. Seacrest. And you promise the truth in your time to the best of your ability today? Yes. Okay. So, staff, can you go on? All right. This is a continued application that we've seen before. This is to remove the chain lick fence from the retaining wall along Gill Alley, keep the front porch as built with modified columns and porch rail. The front porch paint has been previously approved to match the former colors. Install a garden shed on foundation at the rear of the property, repair and replace damaged wood surface at the roof line, repair box gutters and paint all as existing colors, install a new roof using shingles to match the existing, as well as there's a back porch to repair and replace the surface gutters, siding and roof on back porches. The existing doors would be uh, repaired and reinstalled and the windows would be repaired and clapboard siding would be added as needed. Um, I'm not going to go through the rest of this because we've seen it a couple of times, but sure. uh, it also includes a couple other porch windows, paintings, the roofs. Commissioners at the business meeting noted that there needed to be brackets on the uh, front and the post details needed to be replicated. Better board trim sure. details were needed. Uh, the rear additions should have the uh, greater overhangs on the roof as it's more of an appropriate roof detail. The position of the downspouts on the front porch was brought up again. Um, HPO staff included a photo and COA from uh, January 2020 submittal showing the placement of the previous downspouts, one of which was existing on that uh, center, although it was oriented away from the sidewalk. Staff recommends approval with the uh, uh, clarification that the front porch details will be added to match the existing embedded columns and the downspout drainage is routed away from the sidewalk and as well as the downspout is painted to match the column. Okay, great. Uh, over to the applicant. JP, what do you have for us today? 
Uh, I don't really have anything to add to that. Okay. Appreciate uh, you uh, being here to answer questions then. Let's turn it over to the commission. Uh, David, would you like to start? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to be a, a thorn on this one, but I'm gonna keep with it. Just because the one drain pipe was there in the front to begin with, doesn't mean that's the location where it should be today, A. And B, if you notice in the photograph of the existing it was considerably smaller than the one that's there presently today. I still believe strongly that for the importance of this architectural structure, which is contributing, and the preservation office has repeatedly said that, that we ought to get the uh, drain pipe done in a different way on the front. Um, if it want, freeze there a minute, if it wants to be tucked in the corner, uh, like I see one or brought around to the side, which would be far more appropriate and would also meet the staffing issue about not having it drain out onto the sidewalk. I have an objection to that. Is... Let's, I mean, JP, let's, we're going to go through all the commissioners first, and then we'll give you a chance to respond. All right. David, do you have other, other comments? No, otherwise, as long as the other request to change, the trim on the columns, that the whole thing is painted out, uh, colors appropriate, uh, most of that all seems good. If I'm right, the chain link fence is already down, by the way. Um, I don't think it's existing any longer. So some of the things have already been done, but um, I'm, it's the drain pipe and coming out on the sidewalk that's my major concern. Gotcha, sounds good. Uh, Shannon. Do we have you, Shannon? Sorry, uh, I agree I with Commissioner Cook about um, with, with his comments. I, I don't have any additional. Okay, uh, Todd? Um, I, yeah, I don't really have anything additional. I, I suppose that I'm in support of all of those things that Kim listed off and that David brought up are accommodated, such as the trims and uh, the overhangs and all that stuff. If that's going to be agreed to and and done, then I don't have anything additional to add. Okay, great. Um, and Ben. Yeah, I'm uh, in lockstep with everybody else, except that it sounded to me like staff uh, didn't recommend those overhangs on the back. So uh, I'm in alignment with uh, with um, Commissioner Boyer that uh, we should try to um, see that through. It would make the uh, these out buildings a little uh, nicer. And uh, this is the chance because it would be fairly inexpensive to do it now. Okay. So I guess uh, I, would, I would support a motion that included those. And I guess uh, if we just get some clarification from staff about what their um, recommendation is about that. Okay, Kimberly, can you address that? Well, we typically recommend that items that are being repaired are replaced in like kind, which might be appropriate here, but I do understand the greater overhang for the um, back because there's really not much of one. It just goes right into that gutter. Maybe this JP, uh, this is addressed to the applicant. Um, what we're talking about is that the roof just projects a little further over the building uh, on all edges uh, by, say, a foot. Uh, well, actually, be a, say a foot on the uh, the down slope side, and maybe eight inches or six inches on the uh, on the edges. Uh, these are things that will help drainage for you, and maybe even provide a little shelter at the back door. So we think that, uh, besides it being an architecturally appropriate thing, that it might be something you'd want and. Uh, Wonder if you would accept that being part of our requirement in motion. I have no objection to that. Okay. Well, then I, okay. I'm going to support a, a motion that uh, includes that uh, alteration or addition as well. Gotcha. Uh, I don't have anything to add. I definitely um, strongly in agreement with David on that downspout. I don't know when initial place there, but it doesn't 
doesn't work now. So, okay, JP, uh, uh, now it's your turn to respond to any of the things that you heard from the commission. I mean, I have no problem moving the down south. Um, it's just not, I talked to my contractor about it. It's not super high on my priority list because I mean, I have brick falling off my house, but I, I don't care. I mean, I will move it, but I just not sure when. As so long staff, as it's part of the application. I'm sorry, go ahead, Kimberly. Staff does want to know the uh, certificate of appropriate is good for a year. And if you don't get to it in a year, you can always uh, come back and renew it as well. All right. Great. Um, so does someone care to make a motion on this? Uh, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, I move on. Uh, application 20030168038058053805 Summit Street to approve uh, the items uh, as recommended by staff, which um, feature um, moving the downspout, um, applying appropriate details to the porch, front porch roof. Uh, numerous uh, advisories for the windows and uh, remedies for repair and that the back uh, porch structures, the roofs uh, be uh, augmented so that the, there's at least a six inch overhang on the sides and a one foot overhang uh, on the down slope uh, towards the gutter. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. And I'll call the roll. Ben? Yes. Commissioner Goodman? Yep. Uh, Cook? Yes. Fergus? Yes. Uh, Boyer? Yes. And Sudi is a yes. A motion carries. Okay, thanks a lot for coming in, and I uh, can work with staff on moving Okay, uh, moving on to the next one is IV-20-06-022, 1081 North 4th Street. We have the applicant for this one. Yes. Okay, great. Trying to find you here. Uh, will you please raise your right hand and state your name for the record? Um, Michael Young. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony to the best of your ability this afternoon? Yes. And then um, I have my contractor, uh, Josh uh, Metzinger, it's uh, CJE uh, Restorations. That's uh, if he's just here to answer any questions that I can't. Okay, so, we might as well get him sworn in then just in case. Okay. Josh, where are you? Right here. Let me, sorry, dial my thing over here. Oops. Oh, there you are. Uh, will you raise your right hand to state your name for the record? Joshua Metzinger. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony to the best of your ability this afternoon. I do. Okay, great. So I'll turn it over to staff. All right. This is an application to site the house with hardy board, restore trim, soffit, fascia, and gutters. Commissioners thought the existing um, exterior siding was in good condition and could be restored. That was the original under all of the layers there. The asbestos siding could potentially be restored as well. The downsize windows openings were noted as an item that would likely need to be fixed um, and the windows would need to be brought back to their original size. Um, the applicant did tell me he does not wish to restore the asbestos siding. He is open to restoring the existing wood siding, but notes there's a, um, some termite damage and other damage there as well. Uh, staff recommends approving with the condition that the original siding is restored and damaged areas, if needed, are replaced in like kind and the windows are restored to their original openings. Okay, I'll turn it over to you, uh, Michael and Josh. Um, yeah, so to my surprise, um, a lot of the wood looked decent. And when talking with Josh, um, you know, uh, it looks like this is something that can be done and, and it will make the house look like its original self and look nice, um, you know, have good street appeal. So, um, I don't know any of the technical stuff, but Jess can probably tell you <laughs> better than okay. I can. So, 
Sure, right. Josh, do you have some thoughts you'd like to add? Yeah, so uh, um, Michael did a great job. He pulled back uh, some of the siding, the exposed areas, um, so that we could see what's going on. I mean, realistically, a lot of that double two and a half inch Dutch lap is still in good shape. Of course, right around the corner, Fifth Avenue keeps it uh, in stock. So any areas that are soft or any areas that are damaged or um, need to be replaced can be replaced. Um, we can uh, we can install Marvin wood windows in the original rough openings and uh, any trim that of course was removed with the installation of the asbestos and the vinyl siding on the corner, uh, any outside corners, any inside corners and any uh, trim around windows, we can replace it to historically awesome. accurate specifications. So four inch, six inch trim um, in the appropriate places we can do. And most of it you can actually see based upon where it was yeah. removed, um, the actual sure. uh, nominal thicknesses. Well, that's all great news. That's great. Yep. Um, I'll go through the commission and see if anybody else has uh, any uh, thoughts. Todd? Uh, no thoughts. Uh, total support. Ben? Uh, and uh, and I just want to applaud you for taking this on. Uh, you probably get an award for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm hey, assuming sir. that, yeah. I'm assuming that staff, uh, they'll work with staff to make sure what kind of uh, windows would be appropriate in these old openings. Um, so uh, let's just get that on record. Sounds good. Uh, David? Totally in favor. Shannon? Yep, in favor. Yep, same here. Okay, uh, can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, oh. Let's call the roll, Commissioner Cook. Real quick, are we okay. approving it as submitted or are we approving the restoration of the original siding? I believe we are the restoration. Is that correct, David, in your motion? Yes. That it, the wood, the existing wood siding will be replaced. That the uh, original window openings will be honored with windows uh, to be approved by staff prior to installation. Excellent. Thank and, you for clarifying. Uh, Shannon, do you do you still second that motion? Yes. Okay, I'll call the roll, Commissioner Cook. Yes. Commissioner Fergus. Yes. Commissioner Boyer. Yes. Commissioner Goodman? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Okay, motion carries. Thanks a lot. We're excited to see how that turns out. Thank you. See our, uh, staff was talking about that because there are a lot of drawings on here that might construe uh, a, a yeah. grossness of details um, that we are not intending. So, you know, porch posts and so forth, I still think need to be reviewed by staff. Uh, so let's just make sure that that is that the understanding of the emotion and second yeah. i believe so yeah yes, David. yes uh we i specifically said replacement windows it should probably be windows doors and any architectural details staff are you comfortable with that yes i am excellent okay let's uh, move on to the next location looks like uh Lease East Lincoln Street has been withdrawn, so we will skip that and we will move to uh, IV 20 07 158 East 2nd Avenue. And do we have applicants for this? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, will you raise, uh, raise your right hand and state your name for the record? It's, uh, will Lanert. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony to the best of your ability this afternoon? I do. Excellent. Are you going to be uh, presenting on your own or anybody else be joining you? Just me. All right. Sounds good. Staff, what do you have for us? All right. This application is to add a 36 inch tall wrought iron fence and gate per the submitted plan, as well as a seven inch tall stone retaining edge along the city sidewalk, um, limestone slab steps, and a brick uh, walkway from the city sidewalk to the front porch are to be added. Overlay Indiana limestone on existing concrete steps and install limestone stepping throughout the landscaping. A wrought iron porch rail to be added to the steps and planar pots 
uh, to be centered on the lawn. In the rear yard, there is a proposed 10 foot by 20 foot pool with surrounding wood deck. Uh, this would have a blue stone patio and pathways with the landscape plantings. Um, and additional, a six foot wood privacy plants, fence to replace the existing six foot wood privacy fence and chain links link fence. So they're removing the chain link. I had uh, typed it in wrong. Uh, and expand the concrete driveway as well. Uh, the commission had requested clarification on how the stone wall returns back into the gate and where the iron fence ends. The commission had previously requested that permeable papers are used as opposed to poured concrete or a combination of those two for driveways and parking area. And wood decks are typically considered suburban. So would the deck be appropriate around the pool? Uh, staff recommends the clarifications that the stone wall and iron uh, fence returns are submitted. Okay, uh, I'll turn it over to the applicant. So Will, what do you have for us today? So the only question that I saw was how the the retaining edge along the the public sidewalk returns into the the stone steps. Is that is that right? I think that was the major major issue that we had talked about last time. Right. I was hoping to match the top um, tread of the step and and just have that be flush and, and come out to the like a cheek wall on this on the steps. A little sketch. I don't know if you can make this out. Really, while I was sitting here, <laughs> but, I can't actually. It's helpful. An idea where you know that the top step and the the stone wall would would be on the same elevation and wrap around. And then the second question Great. is where the wrought iron fence terminates, and it will terminate into the um into the porch of the east property um front porch of the east property line and then on the west property line will turn north and connect into the south uh west corner of the residence okay okay great um let's start with uh, do you want to start this one sure um I'm going to leave it to the, the fence and, and how it's a meeting um, wall to the architects, but I, I do agree that I, I don't think we can do poured concrete. Um, and I also am wondering if it's just a question to the commission. I think that we're going to be seeing a lot of installation of pools is I lost you. Oh, well, did everybody lose Shannon? Yeah, I lost her. Totally. Okay, we will come back to her. Um, so, uh, Todd, would you like to jump in next? Uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, I think with the clarification of the stone curb at the entrance, um, it's good to me that return makes sense. Um, I understand the fence location. I think with the quality of materials and the design, um, I don't have any objections to uh, really anything in this application. Ben, you want to jump in next? Um, I think this is a well-conceived design and that regardless of uh, the suburban-esque quality of uh, decking, it's, it's uh, it's contained nicely, um, works well designed, but mainly uh, I think that it provides an opportunity for less coverage, uh, which is something I like to keep an eye on and make it you get water going right to the site. So, but this leads me to uh, one more point, and that is I'm understanding that all these pavers will be on a gravel base rather than a concrete base. Uh, so I want to confirm that with the applicant before uh, we make a motion. And uh, I also have a question about how the sidewalk at Punta works. So in other words, is uh, for the pedestrian walking across the sites, 
Uh, is this a step down? Is this a flush? You know, as the sidewalk goes across. Uh, and finally, I'm hoping that the applicant will consider uh, making a part of that apron since he's expanding it into pavers also, so that the uh, so that the entire apron is not concrete. Okay, we'll get back to you in just a second after uh, we hear David's comments. Uh, David, what do you have on this one? I articulate Ben's concerns. First of all, I want to say I think it's a beautifully executed design. Also, uh, I think it's going to be a quite an asset to the neighborhood uh, in its entirety. It's well thought out and well designed. Um, I appreciate where I think Shannon was going about the wood. Uh, what we avoided is wood decks. And in order that we're consistent with our vocabulary, I don't think we'd approve this much wood decking if it was just a patio deck. But I think if we change the term to a pool surround, we're talking about the practicality that it's around the pool area. It's not just a party patio of a great big scale. Uh, I know it's semantics, but we I'm concerned about us uh, being accused of being showing favoritism or not being consistent. I, I think this is an appropriate material around the area for slipping and that type of thing. And, uh, and, and so I'm in favor of it, but I'm just concerned about we we have not let people generally put wood decks in. Um, I see the drawing is labeled clearly deck, but uh, I'm suggesting that we call it a wood pool surround. Um, okay, great. Thank you. I, I just to Shannon's back. So Shannon, did you want to pick up? I think you were on 14 and then you got. Yes. Up exactly where I was going with that. So I, I agree. With David, that as long as we make clear that that this would surround the pool um, and, and not a deck, that we're good to go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, we've kind of been skirting the line in the previous years, kind of distinguish, distinguishing between a platform and a deck. And I don't know if that holds uh, here, but I think, you know, the notion that it is some sort of transitional platform between what's going on with the pool does at least seem to make some sense to me. Um, is it obviously is like a built in in ground, very nice pool. So it's not as if it's uh, radically changing the, the nature of the way that that backyard greening works. So I think from that perspective, I can accept that. Also, that's part of a, an integrated strategy for the entire lot that uh, is obviously well thought out as a cohesive plan. Uh, so I, I would think that it's more of an integrated part of the landscaping and uh, I, could, I could go with the sort of platform nomenclature as the way it works. Um, so with that, uh, let me turn it back over to the applicant. Will, uh, whatever you'd like to respond to, but in particular, you could address the issues that Ben brought about the potential for papers, uh, how they're installed, and the walk at Punta, how that works. Well, there's already an existing apron on Punta, and the, there is a, a slight, I guess in my site photo, I didn't show it. Is there a way of showing that? Um, I think I can. Can we pull that up on Google Street View or something? Actually, there's a photo uh, view northwest to garage from Alley. I think uh, helps illustrate probably where you're heading with this. Well, you know, the way it, it interacts with the existing sidewalk to the east of the site, um, there's an existing um kind of ada if you will it's, it's not it's not a proper ada um, um ramp or whatnot but it, it it is um there's a slope down to alley grade or pavement grade at, at the alley and we would maintain that basically we just have a, a actual slope of the apron from the garage all the way to the pavement. Exactly. And the sidewalk uh, just, it's, it uh, trapezoidally matches, comes, comes from level to a slope. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. 
And then, yeah. then we're well, I'm hoping the applicant would consider instead of uh, con uh, putting concrete in that triangle, uh, either putting it in pavers or if he wants to rectify, uh, uh, reconcile the design with the paver wall coming all the way out to the uh, to the curb, uh, which would be a handsome way to resolve that. Uh, I would support both of those, uh, but rather than add more concrete, consider a permeable um, uh, material. Just out of curiosity, how much concrete are you at? Because I'm looking at it on Google Earth right now too, and it looks like it's 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 are not talking, much. Are you talking about yeah. yeah, it's it's literally just the the there's a little triangle there where the trash cans are sitting on the gotcha. image, and then there's another triangle uh, on the other side. If you look at the plan, there's a dotted line. And it's labeled existing edge of pavement. That shows you kind of the triangle that we're filling in. Yeah, and I guess the question I would have is why you are filling that in. Um, it's it's the ability to have one off street parking in the event of a party, one more off street parking space, and then uh, a place to put the trash cans and things like that. So without blocking yeah, the supposed gate and putting I, I, the trash cans up against the neighbors. Yeah, I, I think I, I what Ben's saying can, you know, makes a lot of sense. I think it'd be pretty easy to put some kind of permeable paver in there that was complementary to your overall plan because you already have these really established edges. Um, and I think it would accomplish the same thing you're talking about. Yeah, that's, that's something that we could um, explore. Well, I'm inclined to put it so. Does that work for, uh, if we put it in the motion for you, Will? Oh, Maybe sorry. You right broke up there. Um, yeah. You do yeah, I think I think that we can agree to that. And um, I can coordinate with staff on any, any further detailing needed. Sounds uh, great. Mr. Chair, okay. one more question. Uh, yep. Did we resolve whether or not all these pavers are sitting on a gravel bed? Will, will can you be, answer that? Yes, they'll be set, sitting on a um, crushed uh, limestone. Right. Sounds, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so does anyone care to make a motion? I'll try to make that motion. Uh, we are talking about uh, 158 Second Avenue, right? Uh, I move on 20-07-009 to approve the uh, application as submitted here today uh, with the understanding that uh, all pavers uh, will be on crushed gravel as opposed to concrete, uh, that the applicant has clarified the uh, uh, step detail at the second Avenue um, edge of the property and how the fence will uh, join with the uh, with the home uh, that the applicant is inclined to change uh, the uh, design at the Punta Alley side to instead of adding concrete uh, to grassy areas existing uh, to add instead uh, permeable pavers based on uh, gravel and we are approving this depth like material because uh, it fits in with an integrated plan uh, and uh, really communicates more like a platform or a surround to a pool as opposed to a raised deck. Uh, would you, think, to would you accept a slight amendment to that to say that Will, for the final drawing, would take the word deck off and put pool surround so that we have it on the final document that will be stamped for appropriateness? I accept that. Okay. Great. And are you... <laughs> okay, great. So I will call the roll, Commissioner Goodman? Yes. Cook? Yes. Fergus? Yes. Here. Yes. 
And I say yes as well. Motion carries. Okay, thanks, well. Appreciate it. All right. Good name. Okay, moving on to the next application. IV-20-07-010852. Summit Street. Do we have applicants for this? Yes. Uh, will you please raise your right hand and state your name for the record? Kyle Green. Promise to tell the truth in your testimony to the best of your ability this afternoon. Is there, is there another another applicant? We don't know the answer to that yet. Oops, I think somebody still has their TV on. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the owner. Will the owner be testifying? Yeah, am I on? I don't know. I do not have a microphone. Yeah. Can you hear me? And, uh, can you raise your right hand and state your name for the record? Uh, this is Amia Day. I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, is, your, okay, is your video on too? Beg your pardon? Your video on? Because we'll need to have your video on if you're going to testify. I I am very lousy in this respect. I don't know whether yeah, I am I'm watching you guys. Um. Okay. Can you see yourself in a little picture? Because usually there's a little spot to like make it says start my video. If you can click that. Start my video. I don't even know. Down at the bottom. Yeah. Huh? Little bubbles yeah. at the bottom. Bubbles where? Yeah. Hover down at the bottom of the screen. There's like little circles with things in them. The second bubble from the left kind of looks like a video camera. I would, I would, I would suggest that you go ahead with Kyle is a good representation. So I'll just okay. go ahead and listen. Yeah, I don't I, want okay. to delay your, your okay. progress. We appreciate it. And you may pop in there oh, yet. Yeah, that's okay. Um, okay, so staff, what do you have for us on this one? So this application is for the addition of four bollards along the north elevation, which would be enclosed by a proposed six foot high privacy fence. And the addition of concrete steps to be added to the north and west elevation at the entry doors, as well as new poured concrete slab at grade on the garage's east and north elevations. Items for discussion includes the Department of Public Service has stated that they have no concerns for the bollards or the fence. Commissioners at the business meeting were concerned about the tight space between the fence and the carriage house and requested a cross section of the fence. The applicant supplied revised drawings, which include the fence section and elevation, reduced amount of concrete paving and the addition of pavers, and a metal railing photo for the steps um, railing. Staff recommends approving with the clarification that it's either the fence or the bollards that are installed, but not both. And I also believe that Kyle did have some did have have something that he wanted to discuss because he forgot. I think it was landings on the drawings. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Kyle, what do you uh, what would you have for us? We lost him. <laughs> Difficulty. Kyle, are you there? Looks like his the spinning circle. Okay. There he is. He's back. Kyle, over to you. Just just in time. Okay. Um, yeah, just basically what we need to provide a landing outside the entry. Slightly different than what, what you're looking at. It'll just be a three foot landing with one step off the side. At the, the entry door. Um, we also just wanted to. Uh, I don't know. I'm on. Can you hear me? Are you there? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, sorry about that. We're just, I'll be quick. Um, we'll just provide a uh, landing outside the, the man door, entry door, um, three foot by three foot concrete landing with a step off to the side. Um, 
think I've lost your video now, though, Kyle. Where is the standing that we're speaking about? Staff, do you know where the landing is? I think it is on that. Oh, good God. Where is that? Where is the elevation? It's, I think it's the side where the bollards are. Because yeah. he mentioned it was for, I think, the apartment upstairs or. Ah. But it, so the plan. The plan is incorrect and it would have a three foot by three foot uh, landing pad before the steps go down to grade. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, it'll just be a one landing and then a step off to the left towards the single garage door. Gotcha. Okay. So let's uh, go around and get some comments from the commissioners. Uh, David, do you want to start this one? Yeah, as, I, as you know, during the meeting, I asked you all to take a look at this uh, intersection or, or this condition. And uh, after viewing it myself, uh, and I wish you would hold just a minute on that picture, uh, I want to finish my thought a minute. I am opposed highly to the fence. Um, and I think the Ballards would do more and keep it open and not just be a collection area. Also, if you look in the picture that's on the right hand side, just a little bit up from the largest puddle, you see a large black element just below the dotted line where they're talking about the fence. That's a piece of steel that is projecting up uh, that would rip a tire. In, in a minute, I'm, I'm interested in hearing because it looks like that's outside the fence zone. And then what this picture is not showing is how uh, there are obstacles on the immediate right of this picture that makes this this alley incredible hard to navigate. To imagine a fence there is just beyond me. So I am highly opposed to the fence. I would recommend the ballards and keep it open. Not add another partition wall there. Um, Shannon, what do you have to say? Um, I actually agree with Commissioner Cook. I think that um, probably no reason to add, add a fence there. Um, just like that, that back alley is. Um, but I, I am fine with the bollards. Todd? Uh, the same feeling. Uh, I'm okay with the bollards, but uh, the fence seems unnecessary. And then I think a lot of that concrete that's in that area that's proposed could go away as well, uh, which I think would help. And um, I'm o I think I'm okay with a three by three landing off the uh, off the entry. So. Okay. And uh, Ben. Yeah, I'll support the uh, the landing uh, since we're just talking about a garage structure here. Um, and as far as the fence bollard situation is, uh, my uh, I, I just felt that the ball it didn't matter what is uh, if bollards there or not if it's behind the fence. But what I do feel strongly about is that the fence shouldn't be six feet high. You know, we typically say six foot high fences are for you know more interior parts of the property and when it's out uh, on the edge or uh, that it should be a lower fence so um, i'll support a motion that has bollards or not but uh, has to um, have a lower fence to to gain my support okay uh i just a couple quick comments i did just take a look at this actually right before the meeting um it appears on the plan that is um, the, the the further zoomed out site plan. I'm not sure which that is. That they do indicate where the utility poles are out there, and when you get out there, whew, man, do they feel close. So the fact that they're indicated on that other plan, that one, makes me feel like they're probably going to stay there. There are two of them, um, and they got a lot of wires on them. They're kind of mangy. That's not really the issue. It's they just seem really close. So. I think uh, I also have the same feeling like a taller fence would be problematic here. I think visible bollards 
is, uh, you know, if, if the city safe, you know, safety department and whoever, whomever else they talk to public service is okay with it, then I think that's a more reasonable solution and that anyone who's going through, they're still going to have to go pretty slow. And if you have a big vehicle, you're going to have to go real slow. Um, but I think a fence would create an even more difficult situation as to the point of, are we, why are we even leaving it open or do we have to leave it open at all? So I think I'm in the same spot. I think either a smaller, lower fence or just bollards. So with all that, I'll turn it back over to the applicant to get a reaction. Uh, so Kyle, what do you think about that? Um, yeah, it, um, it sounds like uh, um, we're gonna need to remove the fence based on, based on that. Um, we, we would like to keep the bollards. Uh, I included in the in the latest revision some of the concrete being removed with paving with pavers instead. So um, we, we were already um, on board with that. Um, I think part of the problem is that I don't think technically that connection there is is an alley from the city's point of view. If you, if you look at the site plan, that's that site plan, the GIS, GIS information from from the city it doesn't connect the two alleys. I think it's more ah, of a city, like a vacated alley that people still use. That's why ah. some of the maintenance issues and it's in such poor condition. So also probably why the city didn't care that, um, you know, we put anything on that corner. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, uh, so, you know, I, I, if, if a shorter fence could be approved, um, then great. Uh, if, if it um, doesn't sound like it is, then, we would like to move ahead with the steps and the paving um, and uh, bollards. Uh, I think if you wanted to come back with that, that would probably be the way to uh, attack that. Uh, if we, you know, I think we can make the motion you suggested now with the pavers and the fence and the, or the pavers and the bollards and the landing. And then if you decided you wanted to come back with a, that would be the appropriate way to, to handle it. I have added myself. Uh, I, I fought, found that uh, video. Uh, this is a mere day. Can I say hey, hold something? On. I'll have to get, hold on. Give me a second. I'll need to get you sworn in. I still am not seeing your image, but let's swear you in. Um, okay. If you can uh, state your name for the record. Yeah, this is a mere day. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony the best of your ability this afternoon? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead, sir. Okay, should I start? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, again, the fan fence is, there are two reasons. Uh, there is an exit door and on the, on the north side uh, from, the, from the house to the second floor. And there is also for the mechanical door. Uh, just to get the privacy for, the, for that exit door, I'm adding, I was adding that. I mean, I'm not, I'm spending money not for any other reason, just to add a privacy first. And second, uh, I think Kyle mentioned about this, or we, we know whoever traveled that area, there are muddy areas. Even in the sunny uh, condition, there are water all, already still there. The uh, last three days, the, uh, even after a little rain, there are puddles. When the car goes there, it, it just splashes that side. Every time I clean that garage and all that. So my intent was to protect my property from all this city uh, or whoever is traveling that. I do not want to restrict their traveling. However, I have to protect the property. And that's why the ballers and all that, I'm going through that expense. Now, if you cannot uh, accept six foot, I can do, uh, I would agree with the four foot uh, high, uh, but one concern is that I, I see the fences everywhere is about six foot. My next door neighbor has that. The next uh, other other house in the northeast side corner has a full fence all around. So, again, it's just my pitch, but I do not want to delay this anymore because it has been delayed just for this. I'm ready for just getting everything done. So I, it, the project has been due to COVID and all that got delayed sure. so i would go ahead any reasonable adjustment uh for you to add the fence but if it's something everybody says no I, we are not going to approve then i have i would have no choice but to accept that and another point is that that steel thing uh that steel uh, cut off pieces that is protruding out of the ground that's actually a city material i did not want to 
remove or do anything with it. There was there was a stop sign post or, or some yield oh. sign, something there. There is the cutoff thing. It's, I, if I do, I may see him come back and say, why did you touch my property? <clears throat> so I jam that, but yeah, um, that's I, something uh, somebody has to direct me or direct city to do that. Okay, let me just uh, take another straw poll here from the commission. Um, I will say that I, I don't think we're talking about precedent at all here as far as the height of your fence being okay. different from others because this is a really weird specific spot. The reason we're concerned with the height is because it's so narrow in between the pole. So I, think I, I do understand that, yes. I do yeah. understand that. So, so let's uh, just talk uh, real quickly around um, everybody. I'm just going to run through the names real fast. Do we, um, where do you stand as far as uh, fence, no fence, bollard, no bollard, short fence, and all that thing? So, David? Ballards only. Okay. Shannon? Uh, bollards, no fence, or short fence. Okay. Ben? I would support a short fence, especially if it integrates the bollards and or some sort of steel post within it, but we'd have to see it okay, next Tom. time. Okay, Todd. You're muted, Todd. Sorry. Um, my preference would be bollards only, just for the visual, uh, still not being able to see in a car. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I could, I work with a short fence, but if you wanna get it approved today, uh, we have to see the details of that fence, and it sounds like you're not interested in delaying that. So if you want something that's approved today, I would say um, sounds like the bollards are going to be the answer for you, and you can always come back with a different uh, solution in the future if you'd like. I would say, Kyle, what is your suggestion? Yeah, uh, that sounds good. That sounds good to me, Amy. I think that's what yeah. we do. Or you can come back with the fence design or you know, revised design for at a later date. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So with that, so can, can I have we a go ahead with the, yeah. Can we go ahead with the steps yeah. and all that so that I can, oh, should we? Okay. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Can we have a motion from the commission? I uh, move on. On. Go ahead. You're on. Uh, I move on uh, dash zero seven dash zero one zero eight fifty two summit street. Uh, to approve the application uh, with the following stipulations uh, that there will be no fence uh, and that the uh, um, stoop on the south side of the building can be uh, modified to be a three foot landing. Do I have a second? Second. second. I think David got in there just before. So I will call the roll. Commissioner Goodman? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Fergus? Yes. Commissioner Boyer? Yes. And Sudi is yes as well. Motion carries. Okay, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. And then we may Can see I request you for one more? Uh, just a separate request. Is there uh, yeah, a way? Sure. Is there a way uh, IVC can recommend uh, those two? Electrical poles, uh, American Electric Power, be removed and relocated somewhere? Uh, we don't really have the power to do that. That being said, if you would, we, I th we would support those if that request, I believe, if you made that request to them. Uh, but that's not something we can do. At least I would support it. I, what is the I, path to though? What is the, my approach? I mean, who do I approach? Uh, a, that's a tough one. Probably longer than we can get into right now, but I would suggest that you contact staff and she may be able to put you in contact with the correct city departments that okay. could help you push that forward. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll get in touch with you, Kimberly, later. Okay. It'll take a while to answer your email, but don't worry. It'll be in the queue. All right. Thank you. No, you have been prompt all along, so. All right, we are moving on to IV-20-07-0113640 East Lincoln. Hello? You're here today? I'm here, hold on one second, I'm messing with my video. Bucky steps physical order. Yeah.
Okay, uh, Kaylin, would you raise your right hand? Say your name. Two cheers. Yes, I am. I don't know if you can see. There you go. Sorry, there was sounded like there's a cascade of something happened. Uh, do you promise to tell the truth about your ability this evening? I do, and I, I believe I see Tyler Poole with the wood companies on the call as well, and he might jump in, so you might want to Okay, great. In. Tyler, can you uh, can you raise your right hand and state your name for the record? Uh, Tyler Poole from the wood companies. And you promise to tell the truth in your testimony to the best of your ability this afternoon? I do. Okay, great. So, staff, what do you have for us? This application is to place an exterior mural on the west side of the garage. The mural will measure approximately 90 feet 6 inches wide by 12 feet tall. Commissioners at the business meeting requested to know exactly where the proposed mural would be located along the wall. It's also noted that this location was more appropriate than the location um, the previous conceptual review for a separate mural. Uh, the short north guidelines state that public art should be designed and installed as to not damage or visually obscure contributing buildings or building elements. A long term maintenance plan should be submitted. Appropriate location is on the side or rear elevations of the building. It should not cover or obscure any architectural elements such as windows, doors, trim, cornices, or other such features. And mural should be pedestrian oriented. Staff recommends the approval of the condition that a long term maintenance plan is submitted prior to the issuance of our certificate. Okay, great. Um, Caitlin, uh, Tyler, would you like to add anything? I'll add one thing. I, the, the picture might be a little bit deceiving, but the mural is closer to about eight feet tall by 58 feet wide. Um, I submitted some renderings of what that mural might look like. I don't know if you were able to see it because I think that was, there you go, um, yeah. a, a recommendation after the business meeting. So I just wanted to make sure that um, the size was was accurate. Um, it's, it's not quite that tall. Gotcha. All right, sounds good. Uh, uh, Shannon, do you want to start? Yes, I am supportive. I, I don't see any issues with this. Okay, sounds good. Todd? Uh, I totally agree. I think the renderings help a lot and show how it, it doesn't really interfere with the windows. Um, I think it's, it's an appropriate location. David? My only question is, what is the material? Is it painted on the brick or is it the film that's been used for the short north, short north uh, art murals? It is Kayla, paint. can you answer that? Paint, paint. Not vinyl. Okay, because we're seeing repeatedly the mural panels are getting destroyed or peeling off the surface of uh pretty quickly now so i would hate to see this start up and then come down very quickly or be in fragments so uh do we have the maintenance plan in place i can Kayla, submit can i can submit a maintenance plan a formal maintenance plan as with all of our permanent murals we have the artist uh clear coat it with ocon graffiti barrier um, which really just seals it in and allows if heaven forbid there was any tag on it, it allows for easy removal without damaging that that mural. Um, that's the same thing we had on the journey mural um, and the same thing eventually we want to coat Mona Lisa mural with as well. And Ben. Um, yeah, a couple of questions the, the, on the graphic representation. There's a white band around, uh, but on the rendering, uh, there's not. Um, can you clarify what the intent is? Great question. A white band. And um, I would support that uh, you actually occupy all the brick space between the uh, the lower openings uh, and the upper openings and left to right because right now it just looks like it's kind of accidentally stopping three and a half uh, inches short. Um, uh, and then finally, um, I kind of wonder if the center orange panel uh, was simply intended to look like brick and would support the idea of it just being on, on the brick without the orange. So can, uh, maybe you can't answer that about the artist's intent, but uh, I think that uh, it would be an appropriate way to render that orange also is just let the brick you know, be itself. 
I, I can, if I can jump in, Jason, um, it's kind of yeah. hard to see in this rendering, but if you zoom in behind the quote, um, it's actually really small, almost hieroglyphic-esque um, drawings that are behind in that orange. So oh, they're very intentional. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see when you're out, but that is pretty intentional um, on the artist's part to want to have that design in the back. And just, uh, and this is drilling down on perhaps something beyond what we should read at all, but the uh, bricks in the an image uh, are probably going to be a different size than the bricks uh, actually shown. And does that bother anybody that, you know, there's this kind of emulation, like it's supposed to be, you know, like the bricks are reading through. In fact, on this rendering parts of, well, I'll leave it at that. Suffice to say, it'd be kind of cool if the bricks were representing themselves uh, in proper scale, but uh, I'll, I'll let, let it go. And I think they will is be. That, yeah. Yeah. It, that yeah, was just that, to show the brick. Okay. Yeah. And um, one thing to add, just uh, the reason we didn't extend it, uh, you know, more uh, towards the northern side is that there's a trash store right there. So if somebody did want to come enjoy the mural, you would be standing right next to the trash, which we want to avoid. We're only talking about three or four inches here, so I, I think that you can be the right code. Oh, I see. I, okay. I thought you were talking about further north. No, just uh, take it the okay. line. It, with the window grids, yeah. Great. Yeah, I don't have any other comments uh, other than I was incorrect in that you would not be able to see the full length of it from the street. The renderings are great. They indicate that it will be just, just fine there. Okay, anyone have any other questions from the commission side? Not gonna have a motion. All right, I'm going to, uh, I don't know if we are approving or uh, recommending, what's the proper term here? We're approving the location. We're approving the location. Okay, well, I move on 20-07-0. Uh, 0 1 1 to approve the location and the application of this artwork uh, at 36 through 40 East Lincoln Street as submitted. I'm sorry, with a small scale uh, modification to match better match the architecture. Do I have a second? second? Second. Okay, sounds good. Got you, Todd. Uh, so, Commissioner Goodman? Yes. Boyer? Fergus? Yes. Cook? Yes. And Subi is yes. It passes. Okay, great. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, moving to the next one. IV-20-1124 North High Streets. Hi, guys. Do we look at this one? Oops. Where the heck am I? Too many windows. Uh, do we have a second? Yes. Okay, great. Can you uh, raise your right hand and state your name? Or, yes, state your name for the record. Uh, Brian Swanson. Hey, Brian, uh, do you promise to tell the truth in your testimony this evening to the best of your ability? Okay, great. So, staff? Location is to replace the existing storefront. Um, glass with accordion style windows on the first floor retail space as well as install a new fabric awning over the previous previously approved front patio space uh, the awning will be gray and it will measure between uh, seven feet ten inches to nine foot nine inches tall commissioners at the business meeting requested clarification on the awning shape and size they would like a cut sheet sample of the proposed colors uh, concerns were raised regarding the windows as well. The applicant did submit a um, photograph of the awning color, so we've got that gray shade as well. Um, there was also a request to reduce the patio size and seating. Some of the commissioners would be willing to have the windows operable only if the seating area was reduced due to concerns of taking away too much sidewalk space from the public. Commissioners are also worried about the patio space becoming a, a plastic wrapped room and wanted to know what the winterization plan for the awning would be, which the applicant clarified that the awning would not 
be winterized. The applicant submitted a um, sample of the awning material and noted that this would match at Bodega at 1044 North High. Uh, the patio space was approved March 19th, 2019, which was uh, the COA mentioned there, and the op operable windows were previously reviewed uh, July 9th, 2019. Staff recommends approval with the condition that the awning space is not used during winter. So, now could you just clarify that about the previous rules? What what was approved exactly? So the patios, like how much of that sidewalk the applicant could use as their dining area was previously approved. Hmm. Um, all right, so over to you, over to you, Brian. Um, yeah, so the awning space or, or the awning, it, it's basically, I try to make it very similar to Bodega, whereas it's very low profile and doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Um, so that was really, you know, my, my, my thought process on that. I like how Bodega is just low profile again and just kind of, you know, isn't a, a huge eyesore on the building. Um, as some awnings can look a little a little bit bulky. So that was my plan on the awning. Um, you know, I'm up for suggestions if you guys would prefer to see something different as far as the awning goes. Um, color too, you know, that gray just seems to kind of go in well with everything in the area, but if there's another color you guys would prefer, uh, it's not that important to me as well. Um, windows, you know, we talked about the windows before and we kind of wanted to, or you guys wanted to really see you know, kind of how the whole front progressed. And obviously, you know, I don't own that building. So, um, you know, I'm not able to really do a complete facade change on it. Um, I don't have permission to do that. Um, you know, so, you know, we've done a paint job on there. Obviously, the sidewalks are starting to come into play finally. Um, the patio has already been um built you know the railings and everything are ready to go we're just awaiting the city um to put those in um you know in the windows in this day and age you know with what's going on with covid people just want fresh air they want windows um you know so you know i'm really trying to do anything i can to really get those windows in there right now um just to help save my business to be honest with you um, you know, outdoor space and window space is just important right now, as you guys know. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go through the the commission. Um, let's start with uh, with David. Uh, God. <laughs> okay, I, I can skip you. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Todd, you want to start? Uh, sure. Um, I think that uh, one of my concerns with the winterization, uh, I think that's been addressed. Um, I'm not hugely in favor of the 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 poles that hold up the awning, but you know we do have a precedent there, so uh, you know I can be okay with it. Um, the awning material that is fine with me, and I, and I think you know one of the advantages of this it is is it ties the whole facade together perhaps a little bit which helps uh, i am concerned about the drawing honestly where it shows everything is at an angle the patio and the awning um and i don't believe that would be the case it would actually just be perpendicular to the building not at an angle um so that's i think something that has to be clarified um but uh since the patio was already approved um i guess i can be okay with the window changes um, based on the fact that it's kind of covered by this awning to be honest um and that's it is my comments okay shannon um i'm pretty much in line with todd um with the patio already being approved these windows opening onto the patio Kind of having that buffer to the street makes me um, more okay with those windows, you know, opening all the way. And and I do understand. I think that we do need to, um, you know, it's not hyperbole that COVID is something we now need to think about. Um, and you know, for the health of our 
spaces in our neighborhood. I think it's important to try to, you know, ensure that they have patio space and opening windows and things like that so that people feel comfortable. I'm sorry, I thought you were done, you cut out. You, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You still have some more, Shannon? Oh, I think she, did I lose you? Okay, over to Ben. Yeah, I'm not gonna support the project. I wasn't in favor of the uh, size of the patio to begin with, and I think this awning only reinforces uh, that decision. So I think that that's the wrong thing to do policy-wise. Uh, especially given uh, my previous position, and especially because I think that uh, the commission ought to support umbrellas rather than awning uh, overhangs. Uh, Bodega is not a good example of what uh, should be done, uh, and I think that if we're trying to encourage outdoor space, uh, that uh, we should be thinking about it being a little more en plein air, you know, just open. It's just open. Um, so. And we still have the uh, the concerns that uh, Mr. Boyer brought up about the, the angle. Uh, and then finally, the windows, I would have supported the, the uh, pullback windows had uh, the applicant considered um, a center post to make it feel like it was uh, more like a real storefront. Um, a center post on both, uh, both sides so that it would have been two, uh, two duplexes. Uh, instead of four uh, according windows in each side. So uh, there are a number of reasons why things that I think could be improved about this uh, project. And, uh, and those are the reasons I will not be supporting it today. Okay, over to you, David. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate uh, uh, the fellow commissioners, but I'm not in line with this unless the awning gets squared to the building in a B, I really question when that patio was approved. Uh, can we go back to the one that shows the planter bed in the sidewalk that's being, uh, so I wonder when that was approved, if that, if the commission knew that that massive planter was going to be located and all of this is leading to how it's crunching down the sidewalk and a major issue was to make a more walkable uh, pedestrian friendly street and this is this creates a problem rather than improves the situation it's unfortunate maybe that this planner is in front of Brian's location I'm certainly not trying to penalize his business but I also think we're here as a preservation body and we should be looking at what are we really making a better condition by adding this to the front of that building we all have our issues with the building I understand he doesn't own it. I want to see him succeed, but I'm not sure we're doing our job when we start putting diagonal awnings that overlap other people's boundaries and cut down the sidewalk. We've seen what's happened at Moxie and it's not good. And I'm worried we're building another one. Why are we continuing uh, things that we know aren't working? Ben's idea, the umbrellas or something that isn't as massive, pull those back to deuce tables would be a far better solution. That's a compromise, but it gets fresh air. It, it leaves it more open. It doesn't add something that is like putting lipstick on a pig. Uh, I'm last, um, I, I, I'm conflicted on this whole um, width and the, the property too. I, I, I suspect David, the fact that we didn't really have a lot of knowledge of or um, updates on the way this, the streetscape was coming together could very well have had an influence on the width that we thought might be out there. Um, one thing I will say that is definitely evidenced itself is that, you know, through either our fault for not just understanding that better or for not getting enough updates. Oh, are you there? You losing me? We got gotcha. you. Um, Okay. Um, whether it's that we, you know, we didn't figure out those updates in time, or we just didn't, weren't provided them. I think my take was when this new streetscape went in, knowing that we were going to lose a lane and we were going essentially a lane of, of travel in a lot of places and have so much more sidewalk space that we could be a little more 
fast and loose with these patios, figuring that we would have this enormous area for people to walk in sort of a promenade style in front of this, um, which is not true. And it's not because the streetscape's bad. It's because there's been a really big prioritization on large planter beds that will sustain really significant plant material. And it looks beautiful. Um, I do think though, that creates a little bit of a challenge for us. And um, I think that this is a little bit of a combination of two of the problems. One, it's making it narrow. And I do think seven feet is too narrow. Uh, I have walked a number of times up by the new one that we kind of, you know, ground our teeth over at town hall and that feels too narrow. Uh, and we had them pull it back. Um, and that's with not very many people on the streets right now. And, you know, at some, I, obviously very aware of the difficulties while this COVID process is going on. At some point, we we're gonna be able to get people back on the streets and man, those streets get crowded and that's a good thing. But we want people to be able to move without being hung up on all these little eddies that stop us if we can avoid it, if we can still have outdoor seating. So while I understand this pre-approved and so I can't, I couldn't stop you from using that space if you wanted to just sort of put, put tables out there uh, I don't think that having that big bulky um, awning and the tables um, are the solution. So I'm going to be uh, maybe somewhere in between um, and say that if we could modify this in some way so it wasn't uh, feeling like such a permanent big outdoor space that I would be more in favor of it. Uh, I would be a less inclined if we hadn't already approved that width. But since that's there, I, I get it. Um, but yeah, I'm having some real heartburn on that too. I'm less concerned with the facade of the building, you know, but if that is sort of a trade off that we have in order to get where we need to go. Uh, for me, the ideal solution would be pulling that back, not having two rows of tables, having the front of the building be able to open up and have some kind of minor covering or, or umbrellas out there. Uh, but that's it. I'll, I'll leave it back to you, Brian, to see what your reaction is. Um, okay. Yeah. So the planner was in the original plans that we sent over just FYI that, that they knew that the engineers had plans for that planner to be, be there the whole time. Um, so that, that was there. And I remember, you know, we talked about in the meeting when this was approved, how you can still walk around the planner on the other side and, and different things like that. So, um, you know, that, that was already there. Um, you know, I want to work with everyone. I want to make everyone happy and I want it to be a great neighborhood and a walkable neighborhood too. Um, you know, so, you know, where would you guys like to see it be? You know, is there any in the middle where we can, you know, maybe reduce it a foot and that would be okay then with the awning and windows or, you know, what's a good compromise here? And, and you know, the other thing is umbrellas. You know, I, I own Balboa and Grandview Cafe. Umbrellas are just a major, major pain. Um, and they can be dangerous too, especially when it gets windy there with that wind blowing across. It's very hard to keep those umbrellas from not blowing over and blowing onto the sidewalk and blowing on people's tables and knocking people's tables over. They're just a nightmare. I mean, it would be a lot cheaper for me just to get, you know, five or six umbrellas and put them out there. Um, easy to do, but, you know, again, not keeping it for the guests or, or the operator. They're, they're a huge pain. Um, you know, a lot of people that do put umbrellas out there, they get the cheap ones from, you know, Budweiser and other companies like that. It, it just ends up being a nightmare. So. That's my thought press on the awning is a lot easier to use the whole table. I, I would say that if you could somehow figure out a way to make it eight feet, I would be able to support it. Uh, what's it at right now? Seven. No, you, the walkway, you're, I mean. you're saying to get the walkway to eight foot. Yeah, if, if you could do that based on the fact that we had already given you indications that it was okay. And yeah. I was probably the one arguing you could walk on the outside. So that's, that's my bad as well. Um, I, I would be able to support it if you could just squeeze a little more room out of there. Yeah, listen, I can have them cut that railing down um, and, and, and refabricate a little bit to fit. You know, if, if you guys are okay with, you know, an eight foot walkway or reducing that patio basically by a foot, um, you know, and allowing me to do the awning and windows, I, I, I can't complain about that. that. That would be great. Okay, well, that's where I am. Uh, I don't know about other folks. Um, let's just take a quick quick run through again. Uh, Shannon, where do you stand? I'm fine with that solution. Okay, uh, Ben? I could let go of the, uh, the windows and architecture if uh, we also got the umbrellas. I just don't think that uh, we should be establishing these long uh, awning enclosures uh, as the president. 
Uh, Todd, where do you stand? Uh, I can support it with the eight foot walkway. Okay, David? Same. Okay, uh, sounds like we're in a spot where we can make a motion. Brian, do you have any other thoughts or questions before we make a motion on this? No, I, I, I just I, get a clarification on this revision. Is the awning still at a diagonal or is it square to the building? I think the reason why they put it at a diagonal is just the way the property line goes, but I don't think it should be at a diagonal. I think it should be straight out. Correct, it should. Can we make that part of the agreed modification? Everybody? Yeah, it works for me if it works for you, Brian. Yeah. Great. Uh, somebody willing to make the motion? Uh, sure, I'll move to uh, I'll move to approve application 20-07-012, 1124 North High Street. Um, as, sub as submitted with the modifications that the uh, the railing in the awning will be per perpendicular to the building and they will only they will provide they will only come out far enough that will allow uh, an eight foot walkable pass between uh, the planter and the face of the awning and the uh, fence. Yep. Okay, great. Do I have a second? second uh, with the uh, clarification that I really think that we should stipulate the distance from the building instead of the space in between. So uh, it, it, it's, the math suggests that it should be eight foot one, but let's just say that it's an eight foot projection from the, uh, the face of the building. As long as, as long as the math works out, if we can, uh, yeah, verify that. I'm on a page. You wanted a second while you're looking up the number, I'll second it. Well, that was my okay. second with that clarification. Oh, I think you didn't. I apologize. Okay, sorry. Okay, sounds good. Sure, Boyer? Yes. Goodman? No. Fergus? Yes. Cook? And Sudi is a yes, it passes. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for working with us. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, Chairman Sudi, may I bring a point that it looks like we're 15 minutes away from two hours. I thought our timeline was 90 minutes. Uh, can you give me an update or whether we're going to end in 10 minutes or? Uh, do I, I, I have an update in that I have to end in 10 minutes because I have to present to the Franklinton Area Commission starting at six. So I'm going to turn so that one an obligation staff. and would we'll be leaving. Yeah, staff, what did you uh, what do you think? So I believe we've extended it to a three hour oh. time period so we could go for a full hour. But I think with what we have left, hopefully we should be able to fit it into just a half hour. We've got a couple more applications and one old business item. Okay, so press on a little further and I'll give it to you guys as, to decide. As long as the commissioners are. I will not be able to stay on tonight. Yeah, unfortunately I can't either just because I've got this other meeting I have to jump right on, so. But once a quorum has been established, uh, the meeting can go forward. Yeah, you'll have three. Can the other three? I can only go until 6.30. Okay. Ben and Todd, you're okay till 6.30? Yes. I reckon. Okay, sounds good. So let's uh, jump into this next one then. It is uh, IV-20-07-013, 940 North High. All right, I did see Ryan Keener here. I'm here. Okay, great. Ryan, right hand. Uh, Ryan Keener, Mode Architects. And you promised to tell the truth in your testimony the best year of this evening. Yes. Uh, staff. <laughs> right. The application is for the addition of a sidewalk patio uh, with a 20 person capacity, um, two inch black steel tube railing, um, 
patio uh, furnishings to include tables, chairs, and umbrellas. The commissioners noted that the sidewalk is proposed at six feet, um, which was not wide enough for pedestrians. A reduction of the seats patio space was requested. Uh, the commission is not opposed to the outdoor dining, rather they are concerned about the public space. And a question came up if the rail would satisfy uh, the Ohio Liquor Commission. Uh, the applicant submitted revised documents after the business meeting. Um, and this was increasing that um, space for the pedestrians. Um, staff recommends approval with the condition that the public sidewalk be a minimum of eight feet wide. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let's uh, turn over to the applicant for a moment. What would you uh, like to tell us? Sure. So uh, after the business meeting, I went back and I revised the drawings. So we have eight foot clear from the, the planters to the uh, two inch uh, tube steel rail. And then that leaves us six feet for the actual patio. Uh, I also uh, widened the, the entry. Uh, it was at uh, six feet before, I believe it's at eight feet now. Um, the entry to, to the patio and then to the restaurant as well. Great. Um, well, I'll go first. I may have to drop off. Uh, I am now in support of it with the addition of that walkway uh, modification, and we appreciate you working with us to accommodate that. I'll go sure. through the commissioners. Um, so let's start with, uh, with uh, Ben. You want to start this one? Uh, I think it's a great improvement, and you can see uh, uh, how it falls in line with the uh, the intent and uh, what we just went through in the last application. So, uh, and we're just talking about the space itself. Are we talking about any architecture on this? The, the tables and umbrellas, and by the way, umbrellas uh, are being proposed here. That's a good thing in my viewpoint, uh, but um, no awning. Correct. Yeah, support this. Okay. Uh, Thank Shannon? You. I just want to be clear what the drawing I'm looking at on page two of the PDF still shows only a six foot public sidewalk. If you scroll down the revised documents or towards the bottom. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I agree with Ben. David. I'm fine. And Todd. Uh, the same. I'm in favor of the modifications. Okay, can I have a motion? Ryan, it did. Uh, the liquor control said that being able to crawl under it like that is okay. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the photo there that's up um, of the, the proposed rail, uh, we have used this before. That is uh, on South High Street in the brewery district. Uh, so yes, this is, this is acceptable. I'll make that motion to approve 20-07-013940 uh, uh, North High Street uh, with the revised drawing to allow eight, foot, uh, eight feet of clearance between the uh, rail uh, and the nearest planter um, as submitted. We have the revisions, revised drawings. Yes. Great. Got a second from from Commissioner Fergus. Good. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Goodman? Yes. Fergus? Yes. Cook? Yes. Boyer? Yes. And Sudi's a yes as well. Uh, thanks for making the changes. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. On to number uh, 20-07-014680 Civitas. Guessing Rob's out there somewhere. Rob is not able to join us today. All right. Well, you in, can, instead can raise your right hand, state your name for the record. Brent Racer. And you promise to tell the truth to the best of your ability in your testimony tonight. I do. Okay, thanks. Uh, Stan. This application is to change the previously approved landscape hardscape uh, that cross to approve the general location, sizes, massing, and proportions with final details to follow. Two canopies are um, being added over the main entrance and in the building courtyards. Uh, the request is to approve the with, to approve with details to follow. Commissioners at the business meeting requested a one half inch to a one foot measured and scaled section drawing of the proposed canopies. Uh, commissioners wanted to know where the synthetic turf was being used as well. 
The proposed canopies were noted as being heavy, but in proportion with the approved structures, commissioners were also in support of having the lawn in front with the pools in the courtyard areas. Staff recommends approval with uh, the details for landscaping and canopies to be submitted uh, for the commission for the commission's final review and approval. Okay, thank you, uh, Brent. What do you have for us? That's one. Um, really. One comment, which uh, we did look at the proportions again. We think with uh, the peak of the element that you're seeing here in this image is uh, north of 70 feet. And our thinking is, you know, we're our canopy is roughly two feet in dimension, and with the height and whatnot of that of that structure, we really actually do think that the proportions of this do make sense. Um, you know, this is this specifically this image or this awning is going to be seen in that lawn that's kind of. Um, at the, the to the west of it, so we're, we are really thinking that uh, the proportions of that do um, make sense to the building itself. So, I'm Great. happy to answer okay. any questions. Thanks. Uh, let's start with Ben. Um, I think the posts still look pretty heavy, but uh, I appreciate that you looked at it again and will support it just because uh, you have some rationale and some belief. David. Thank you. You have comments, David? He might have lost. We lost, lost him already. Um, Todd? Uh, I don't have any additional comments. I, I like all the changes. Um, I think if they took a look at the proportions and it, they feel it works, I think I'm good. And Shannon? Uh, where is the turf being used? Um, if you look at the bottom of the, the page here, the I, I guess I'm going to call it the off-colored um, section that's in the center. Um, kind of, if you were to kind of continue out from the canopy heading west, it's that lower section there. Um, I do believe at least one of the gentlemen from Pod is on, um, so if he happens to want to oh, wait. Hey, Dave, hey Dave, can I swear you in? Oh, from Pod. You guys, you were using Pod on this. I'm sorry, I had the wrong wrong firm. Who's who's here from Pod? I'm looking at the list here, and I don't see those guys. Um, I know Sean Cullen is with. I'm trying to check here. Um, oh, it's actually Steve from Pod. But I do not see him on the list. Uh, so he may have had another. Um, gotcha. I'm a little worried about the turf. I'm gonna excuse me um, real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to jump off for my uh, other meeting. Thanks, um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Todd. You you have the calm, as they say, in the science fiction business. Gotcha. All right, I'll see you Thanks. later. See ya, Shannon. Yep. Thank um, you. Hi. So I am a little worried about the turf. Um, I can't think of a time when I've seen turf actually perform well in the state of Ohio uh, with our weather. Um, winters. So I, I is what's your what's your rationale for wanting to use turf? Well, it's, they, that plaza is meant to be kind of um, multi-use. Um, they will stage events and things like that. Um, they talked about trying to utilize that for multiple reasons. And they they actually were thinking that the turf would be the best um, kind of all weather application there rather than using a grass of some sort that um, could potentially be um, get worn out or, you know, um, get uh, um, whether it be animals or what have you. Uh, there that end up tearing it up. So they actually were thinking that actually will help um, to use the turf that they were suggesting. And I think, um, and I, I apologize, I can't zoom in. Um, the key that's on the right of the page that's shown here um, probably should indicate. Um, yeah, I see that. It, yeah. I so. think it's fine. I mean, it, it's an internal courtyard. So if you want to use turf, you can use turf, I, I guess. 
I, I guess I don't, I wouldn't let that hold us up, but I, I wouldn't, I definitely would not approve this if it were on the, uh, you know, in a public access area being so internal and private. I, I think it's fine to test it out and see what happens. Sure. Did Ben? Well, I, I didn't realize that the turf was going to, the artificial turf was going to be in such a massive area. So uh, I think I have several more questions. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not a landscape architect. So is turf pervious? Is the is it yes. based on? Okay. And uh, I know what I do know is that there uh, are many grades of uh, artificial turf out there, some of them much better than others uh, in terms of appearance. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think that it would, uh, this is, if this is going to be an experiment for us, it shouldn't be on such a grand scale. And, uh, and at least I think that we should hold back until we see a sample of it. Uh, so, um, I, I guess I'm pulling back on my uh, support of the turf idea until uh, we either a can uh, see samples or you know test it on a small area or just go to a real uh, turf. Okay, I know that, um, and Steve did just send me a quick message, but I, I think that's certainly fine to provide samples and potentially get um, some. Uh, wear history, if nothing else, um, on the turf itself. So I don't see that as being a problem at all. About providing some more additional information. So I think I think Brent maybe as that that is part of your package with the additional details. I think maybe we could move forward with a motion that either says that's going to be natural or artificial turf, depending on our approval of those future details and samples and that kind of stuff. Yeah, we'd be happy with that. Okay. Um, well, it's just the three of us, Shannon, Ben, anybody want to make a motion? I'll move to approve uh, the application 2007-014-680 Civitas uh, to approve with the following stipulations uh, that the um, applicant either change the uh, uh, artificial turf to act to real turf or to continue uh, and and submit um, samples for the commission to review uh, for possible approval also. Sure. Second, Ed. All right. Um, okay, we'll do roll. Um, ben. Shannon. Yes. Uh, I am also a yes. So motion carries. Um, and I think that's good. Thanks, Brent. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, we are off to application number 12, IV 20. Dash zero seven zero one five seven 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 North Fourth Street. Um, Shannon and Ben, I have to abstain from this one. Um, which you know, it'll, <laughs> so, you know, whenever you guys want to do, just go with it. <laughs> um, I would like to note this is a conceptual review. Yes. So you don't have to. Yeah. yeah so that that helps. All right, so I'll step aside if somebody wants to, wants to, or Kim, should I swear them in or just step aside now? Uh, you can step aside. I didn't want to check, Connie. I'm still good to continue even though I don't have a quorum, correct? And this is probably the, the one time that Connie's. Our desk. Right. Connie, I'm still, I'm still okay to continue without quorum because we started with one, correct? Um, I think you're not actually. No, I think you're not supposed to take any action without an actual quorum of seated commissioners. 
not just those who are present, but who are seated. Okay. So would we be able to do the conceptual review? Or I think you can do the conceptual because you're not going to take any action. Okay. And then for the old business item, I'll try to organize something else because we need to vote on that. Uh, is, is there one of the city attorneys present? I'm sorry? One of the city attorneys present? I don't think so. Okay. Thank you, Connie. Okay, so Kim, I'll just step aside then. I guess we can move forward with number 12. Sounds good. I need um, Commissioner Goodman or Commissioner Fergus to swear in our, app our applicants, please. Say that again. What did you just do? I will need somebody to swear in our applicant. Okay, I'll, I'll step in. Uh, uh, let me get back to the image. So, uh, who do we have representing the applicant uh, today? Ed Fair, are you? This is Ed. Yeah, and Carolyn. Name, Carolyn Price. Right, raise your right hand and uh, state your name. Carolyn Price. Okay. All right, Carolyn. Uh, and the other uh, representative, Ed, can you raise your hand and state your name, please? Edward Fayhair. And do you both uh, solemnly swear to tell the truth of the best of your ability here today? I do. Yeah. All right, fantastic. We should have a third one here, Dave, as well. Dave, come on. Yeah. Yes, can you hear me? I hear another voice. Can you hear me? Uh, Dave Gupala with uh, G2. And do you sign this part to tell the truth the, uh, in your testimony to today the best of your ability? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so my understanding of this process, uh, help me out here, Kimberly, we'll listen to the applicant uh, for um, their description of the project, and then uh, we'll listen to Shannon and I tell our side of the story. Well, I'll give the staff report first, and then we'll pass it over to the applicant, and then pass it over to the commissioners. So I'll run through this real quick, and then I'll let the applicant uh, fill in anything I've missed. So this is a conceptual review for including uh, graphics, signage package, landscaping patio, and minor revisions to the exterior of the building. Graphics include um, adding the address in white to be painted on the east elevation of North Fourth, a hot rolled steel sign with the etched logo to be mounted on the brick facade, add wall sconces on either side of the main entry, and sand blast the logo into the concrete at the foot of the doors. Landscaping includes creating a patio garden space just north of the building. Uh, this would include some small ornamental trees, various shrub, vines, ground cover. Um, installation of the wood, a wooden steel fence at the north of the building. Minor renovations would include uh, the main entrance would have a wood plank door with an aluminum frame. Uh, the new doors would be added along that north elevation. There would be an additional door at the northwest corner for service and the location of the HVAC condensers at the northeast of the building, as well as mechanical louvers on the west elevation. Um, just a reminder about city code, the standards for site improvement, landscaping, parking, utility, or service areas, walkways, and similar improvements should be compatible to each other and to the subject building or structures, as well as to the adjacent contributing properties. Uh, fences of wrought iron, stone, or wood are encouraged. Standards for alteration: every reasonable effort should be made to make the uh, to be made to use the property for its original intended purposes, or provide a compatible use requiring minimal alteration. The distinguishing characteristics of the property should not be destroyed. The removal or alteration of any historic material or distinctive architectural features should be avoided whenever possible. I will hand that over to our applicant to fill in any blanks that I may have missed. Thank you, Kimberly. This is Ed Fay here. Uh, the first question I have is, I have 
a request for action, not conceptual review. I'm wondering how that occurred, that switch to conceptual review. So as a staff, I can make that determination, especially this is something large. We want to put it in front of the commission as a conceptual or first, just so we don't have a continued item. And it allows a little bit more discussion as well, because as you saw, we flew through some of those items that we voted on, but I wanted to make sure this got the proper time for review and discussion. Okay, thank you. So four major components to the project. There, there's what's called um, exterior signage at the front of the building. Um, and that's section A. Section B and C consist of the patio and landscaping. C is the fencing. And then section D is, and it relates to those orange bubbles, is the exterior revisions, minor revision. I think we ought to jump into the front regarding exterior signage. And Carolyn, can you step in and talk about that? Sure. Um, so as we are taking a look at this um, building on the exterior signage, we wanted to do something that was appropriate, elegant, and understated at the same time. So what you're seeing is we are painting the address above the doorway. Um, we used an example such as Coseca on North 4th Street as an example of how that would be painted above the doorway. Um, we are accenting a hot rolled steel sign that will be flush mounted to um, the facade. Um, it'll be etched, so it'll get to have that nice subtle and it'll be lit externally by sconce um, for nighttime viewing. Should, just, uh, should we make comments on each section? Shannon, how do you feel? Do you want to like uh, respond after each section or do you want to? Yeah. Yeah, I think we might as well just do it in that manner. Um, I am actually okay with all of this. I, I think it's a really good um, treatment. All, all three of them are, are fine with me. Um, I, I assume Edison, I mean, we're approving the actual logo and sign right now, correct? Well, this is going to be a consideration, unfortunately, so we're not approving anything as it stands. Right. So we're doing our you best know what I mean, to though. represent yeah. the, the whole commission. No, but I'm saying um, I'm I'm asking the application is what would be put it put into the concrete and what like going yeah. on. Yes, as of now, that is the logo, and that is what will be um, scale and design is what will be etched in the um, steel as well as sandblasted into the concrete foot of the step in front of the door. Okay. Yeah. But, so yeah, those are my comments. I think these are all um, really good solutions. Pulling from you know, a few different uh, areas on North Fork that, that we've approved in the past, I believe have been successful. Um, I'll jump in there and say that uh, I also think this is a nice job, Carolyn. So uh, I, I do think uh, there is some pushback from some of the commission to have painted anything on a building. Uh, I think personally that uh, we've, had a good precedent set at Kosecha and some other places. And because this is such a minimal application that um, uh, you know, I'll advocate pretty hard for it, uh, but just understand that some may not feel the same, uh, same way that uh, we do. So, uh, but on the other elements, I think it's really nice to see the steel. Uh, I think it's nice to see that uh, sort of uh, doormat kind of element. Um, I'm a little bit wondering, is that actually uh, cast into the concrete or you, is that etched in the stone? What's that? Um, um, it'll be etched into the concrete, so they'll sandblast it into the concrete. They'll That'll sandblast it. So are you doing a V, v cut to that? And you have an example of painting it. So are you also doing a paint fill on that? Um, I think that's up for discussion. Um, similar application that I actually recently saw was outside the new restoration hardware. Um, facility now that they infilled theirs with, I think, more of a brass. Um, we wanted ours not to do that, just a little more of a subtle, more of a subtle application into it as well. Well, I, I think it's uh, fine to explore that. I don't know that everybody will feel that uh, it, the paint infill 
uh, is the right thing. I think that it would be uh, kind of nice, but uh, be prepared to have to pull that out. Um, but the, uh, I think you'll probably get a good consensus for the, the carved letters uh, themselves. And by the way, the sconces, uh, normally uh, we get kind of prickly about sconces if they're used too liberally, but because these uh, embrace the doorway and the entrance and also serve to illuminate that sign below, I think uh, it's, it's an appropriate kind of solution. Should we go to section B? Applicant, do you want to talk about this? Uh? Uh, yeah, we're talking about the uh, landscape plan now. Yes. So the overall site plan uh, basically was driven by the approved uh, compliance plan by the city of Columbus. So overall, the site plan has not changed other than we um, included some detail into the courtyard uh, and propose a landscape plan uh, on top of the um, uh, compliance plan. So uh, parking lots are screened with uh, evergreen shrubs um, from North Street right of way. Um, we've highlighted the building architecture and the front elevation with uh, some black planters that are kind of aligned with the uh, architectural columns. Um, as you extend north, we've got a really nice um, wood and steel frame fence. Uh, the wood is cedar slats um, and then framed with steel. Uh, we have precedent images to help convey that design as well. Um, at the base, we have softened the, um, the fence with uh, plant material uh, along the North Street right way as well. Uh, Continuing north, you'll hit some uh, two steel columns. Uh, these are going to be black steel columns with etched and laser cut designs inside them, and then also internally illuminated. So that design is going to be uh, glowing at night. And they're also anchoring the entrance into the courtyard off of North 4th Street. So you'll go up a couple concrete steps uh, through this gated entrance into the uh, courtyard. As you get into the courtyard, it's going to be a concrete patio, approximately 900 square feet. Um, there's going to be a, a slight buff wash standard concrete pattern on the ground plane, uh, just to give it some subtle visual interest. Um, centered on the courtyard, we've got approximately a 12 by 6 specialty paved area that's going to be used to highlight certain significant events during ceremonies, um, speakers, uh, a graduations, you know, whatever it, uh, catering services, whatever um, is going to be significant during that outdoor event can take place in this area. Uh, just west of that area, you can enter the building. There's two doors um, that you enter the uh, the actual building and then ingress egress into the courtyard. Um, that entrance is flush. Uh, surrounding the perimeter of the courtyard, we've got uh, limestone seat walls. Those will have a limestone veneer with a smooth precast concrete cap on top uh, and then surrounding the entire courtyard um, with plant material, evergreen shrubs, uh, fragrant deciduous shrubs, um, ground covers, and then some open turf areas. Uh, I'll jump in first this time that uh, just a really lovely plan, uh, but uh, there's some things you're going to bump into. I we we really have been pushing hard for uh, more permeable uh, hard surfaces, and so uh, I think I speak for a lot of the commission that uh, that the, the right solution might be to uh, modify some of that paving area to be permeable, uh, you know, so that you don't have to have the expense for the whole thing. But of course, if you want to do the whole um, hard uh, surface and permeable, that would be fantastic as well. Um, I think the uh, columns idea on the uh, east side of the plan, it sounds really fantastic. Uh, the illumination and so forth should uh, really feel uh, 
handsome and I think the material selection makes it feel like it's paying some sort of homage to the uh, past uh, as I think do the uh, the fence panel materials although I think you're going to run into some friction with its height and uh, and sort of opacity so uh, I think you were going to want to consider uh, either uh, lowering that fence, uh, perhaps using the same materials, but taking on kind of a more louvered uh, kind of approach, you know, vertical louver, uh, so that you allow some visibility through it so it doesn't feel so uh, hard. And part of the reason that I think that uh, that has legitimacy um, as a comment is because we don't stand, uh, we don't have a problem with tall fences per se, except when they are right at the front edge of a property. So uh, just something for consideration. I'll be interested to see what uh, um, Ms. Fergus has to say about that as well. Shannon? Uh, yes, I think that you, in order, in order for any approval on the patio, I think that you are gonna need to move to permeable pavers, and I think it's gonna have to be more than 50%. Um, permeable, um, so it is a large area. Um, moving on to the, uh, uh, to, sorry, this like takes so long every time I scroll to this application for some reason. Um, so the steel columns, um, I completely agree with Ben. However, I think because they are internally illuminated, we are like this lab there I think is probably not going to fly. I think that it will look as if it's signage. Um, so I, I would take a look at uh, making these more into pieces of art um, rather than, you know, address them. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure that other commissioners will be so favorable. Um, and, and I think they, there is an opportunity to do something a little bit more artful. Um, than what you have going on. You're kind of almost there, but not, not all the way. Um, agree with the fence height. Unfortunately, I think that um, it's probably a little tall and unless you give some type of uh, louvered look, uh, again, you might have some, some problems getting that through. Okay. I'll just uh, add that, uh, that I think some detail, those columns for the next uh, meeting would be, uh, would be helpful. Okay. Should we go uh, to D? Do you mind if I respond real quickly, just sure. so you get a full understanding? Um, the permeable pavers has been uh, a discussion internally with the design team. So we definitely agree and, and are on, on par with you. Um, one big concern that we do have um, with our client is that um, these, these this space is going to be used for um, high end ceremonies. So we're going to have a lot of women in high heels and with those permeable pavers, there's gaps in between and it's not easy for them to walk on. Um, is is there any flexibility in that or um, is that something that that you really think that that we should have included in this courtyard? I think you're going to need to include it. I, I don't have an argument because I think that there are permeable pavers while more expensive, um, you know, can meet the purpose of the high heel. And that is coming from a woman that does <laughs> heels get stuck in permeable pavers. So I understand. However, um, I think that that's, a, you know, there it, there is a material that you can use. Uh, it costs more, but okay. there's a way to do it. So. Yeah, we can definitely look at it. It's not necessarily about the cost. It's more about how it functions. So I understand. Thank you. Anything else there on section C or B and C? Should we move to D? Yep. Uh, Ed, do you want to speak about this one or? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you okay. Um, 
we have just a few minor modifications that we are looking at for the exterior. And then one item that um, the board asked us to come back with, and that was the front door. Um, we are proposing a front door that would be, wait, there you go. Um, a plank door surrounded by uh, steel or aluminum in a finish to match the existing approved aluminum window and glass system. Um, so that, that's what we're proposing for that revision, that clarity on that front door. If we go around to the north of the building, we are adding a door. These are the existing approved elevations. Next sheet should show the proposed. And you can see about midway down that north facade, which is the top elevation, we are adding another glass door and transom window above to match the other door that had been approved previously. We're doing this because, you know, large groups of people, 100 to 150, are going to be moving in and out of the building to that garden. And one door is not sufficient for them. The other door that we're adding is just beyond, just on the west edge of that newly built shed that houses mechanical and water service. And again, it's the same kind of door for the transom above to match the other two. On the west elevation and on the monitor, um, yes, that is the existing approved west elevation. It's the drawing at the top of the sheet. Has a, a big glazed opening with pair of doors. Above that, we're proposing intake air louvers. They'll be made of aluminum. The finish will match the proposed window system. Uh, those louvers are required for air intake. And as a companion to that, if we go back to the north and south elevations, there's a monitor that runs almost full length of the building or a clear story. I call it a monitor. It was initially proposed to have the windows restored, new windows placed in it. Because of the economizer air system, we need more louvers to the building. These will be exhaust. And that's what a clear story or monitor was typically built for, was to exhaust hot air out of the top of the building. So we are proposing four louvers, two at each end on the north and south elevations for that exhaust. And those are the minor, minor what I call minor modifications to the exterior. And like I said, all materials will match what Kevin is putting in as in terms of the finish on the window system. Shannon? Um, I'm fine with all of these. I assume has a um, has Shippo approved all of this? I believe you're muted. I didn't intentionally mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. There, Kevin is working with Shippo right now. Um, I'm definitely probably miss the review of the door. The only thing I'm not fine with is I'm very disappointed in the door. Um, if I remember, I mean, we had talked about something historical or at the very least if it's going to kind of match the fence i would like it to really match the fence um this slat should like it because it kind of looks like it's being carried over from the install. so if that's the case instead of just like a bunch of i mean 
like a, a cardboarded, or not cardboarded, but um, you know what I mean. My brain is leaving, but in, instead of just looking, like we slap wood onto the door, which is kind of what I'm afraid that's going to work like. It should, at the at minimum, really match, you know, whatever we finally choose to do um, in terms of the direction and facing. And, um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand anything that you were saying because it's cutting in and out. Mr. Fair, I think it might be your audio that I'm going to be temporarily. I'm and then now as well. So I, there, I think it's a web connection perhaps for a Shannon, but uh, it is getting kind of garbled Shannon. So I guess you'll have to speak more slowly so that we can just kind of plow through it. Okay. Uh, can you hear me right now? Yes. Um, I'm okay with everything except I'm concerned about the door. It would, um, has just kind of been slapped into a frame. Um, and if I don't know what previous conversations the commission had last month, um, at the special meeting, but I, uh, that, that really worries me. And at the very minimum, it should match, you know, whatever direction we go with the fence. If, if this is a solution it is just wood in a frame. Okay. Uh, I have a little bit different perspective of that door. I think that it has a little bit of uh, uh, industrial sort of a uh, heft to it that, um, that that's how it reads to my eye. Uh, that said, I understand uh, that it is interesting to think about its relationship to the fence uh, to the north. Um, in terms of materials and its uh, orientation of the material. Uh, but um, I think that you'll probably get a smattering of uh, of support in both directions on that comment. So just be, be aware and maybe have uh, some response and or plan B in place uh, in case that gets into any trouble. Uh, I uh, think that the new doors um, Let's see here. I, I guess I want to talk about the the doors on the. Uh, Every I got to jump off. Sorry. All right. So, as in right this minute, or can we just conclude this and then um, and then adjourn? I have like six minutes, but go ahead. All right. So let me just uh, wrap up here and say that. I think the man door, the way you've uh, created them uh, to to uh, borrow from arches of adjacent openings, seems appropriate to uh, to my eye from this seat. So uh, well done. I kind of wonder if, uh, and as far as on the monitors go, um, sad to see the windows go, but uh, I think that uh, this is an appropriate kind of adaptation to the monitor and your ventilation needs. Uh, we'll see how others feel about that. Um, and the only other thing, oh, I guess I wondered about the uh, intakes or the exhaust on the west elevation being so rectilinear. Or, or, I, is there any chance that uh, we can see an arch in those openings? Um, I don't know if that's uh, feasible and uh, how the others will feel about that, but it uh, it would be one way to better adapt uh, those those openings uh, to the architecture. Any thoughts from you before we uh, conclude this applications comments and uh, adjourn? Applicant. <laughs> Am I allowed to speak? Sure. Okay. Um, I appreciate your feedback, Ben, on the um, intake on the west. Um, I will take a look at that. It, it, that is certainly uh, feasible. So we'll take that into consideration. Fantastic. As far as, as, far as the front door, Ben, um, yes, we were trying to 
incorporate a bit of a gutsy industrial feel um, because they're wood planks. They're not just wood boards. They'd be fairly large in scale and relatively rustic. However, Shannon, um, I appreciate your comment on it. Um, I think they could be a little bit more rustic and a little bit more unique. Uh, a backup to this, a plan B for me was a, a, a zinc door. Uh, if we could find a pair that were salvaged, that would be terrific. We will approach the uh, about again. Sound like good plans and uh, good feedback. Um, so you can see that uh, we're winnowing down because of the timeline, and uh, so we kind of need to adjourn the meeting. And uh, apologize that this couldn't have been a full approval, as opposed to a um, uh, conceptual. Uh, but uh, work with staff to figure out how to be best prepared for the next meeting. And uh, with that, I would say that uh, thank you for coming and uh, we need to move on to adjournment. Thank you. Um, and so I'm inclined just to take a motion to adjourn. And uh, Kimberly, is that okay if we just do that as a tandem? Well, Todd's still on. Oh, we do, okay. Yes, he's, he just abstained from Gotcha. Yeah, last application. Yeah, well, we can't have that without a quorum. Oh, okay. Okay. Which, Brent, stay on. I'll address after we get uh, adjourned here since I know Shannon needs to go. Oh, okay. So I mean, if we can quickly just approve this, this whole business one, we can do it. Two minutes. Um, well, no, no, we need the quorum for that. Oh, right. And three of us is in a corner. Yeah, or else I, you know, run through that, but I'll yeah. work something okay. out. I might be sending an email out to everybody. So that way we don't have to have a special meeting for that. We can tackle it because it's pretty much just a verification on the motion because the applicant didn't agree to the tile coping. But, and Brent, I'll send an email to you and Rob okay. after I clear things past Jamie, just so I'm doing everything okay. correctly. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so then uh, somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Adjourn. Seconded. All right. All, right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Is that is that good, Kim? Yes. Yes. And right. thank you all for staying on. So.